How's it going, bros and hoes? So this is the other engine that I managed to buy. It's another 195.6. Except this one is the OHV, the overhead valve engine. Top is slightly different. As you can see, there are the lifters inside. I already cleaned it up quite a bit. It was absolutely not like that when I got it. There are all the lifters, they all turn freely. Now, the crank wasn't turning really well. It would turn just a bit, so it was seized. And that piston in there, that one, it's kind of seized onto its uh, pin. It's not turning around its pin. There is oil, and the crank doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look great either, but... Zoom in there. Okay, looks like that's not happening. Bastard. Let's try one more time. Yeah, it's not happening. Okay. Stupid camera. But everything else looks alright. The crank isn't great. But I put new bearings in there and we'll be fine. So, yeah, it wasn't turning. There was a lot of, I didn't want to turn it. You never want to turn these engines by force. They only take a little bit of force to turn. You should be able to turn them by hand. If they don't, I know some people take big wrenches and that's when you don't really have an interest of saving or preserving the engine. You just want it to run a bit more. And I've seen all this garbage here, so I didn't want to turn it with this garbage inside. I wanted to take out the pistons, clean it up, and then reassemble it. And uh, I want to see if I also want to see if ATF or an automatic transmission fluid can remove this garbage here. And they come off uh, without a ridge reamer, although. On some tough spots where there's junk, I just carefully used a chisel to scrape off the edge there. See, the piston only goes up to there. It won't come all the way up, so that you're left with a little bit of a ridge there. Which is not a big deal, I don't think. Shouldn't be a problem. So, the crankshaft is already turning. Looks in good condition. Uh, there are some differences with this engine and the other one. Uh, the mounting bracket on this one is in the middle, which I prefer, but I will have to fabricate a bracket if I have to use it. Or, I can swap, I'm pretty sure I can swap the uh, this part here. This is where, on the engine, the uh, front mounts actually go on this cover here. There's the oil pan, so I'll show you that just in a second. Here's the, uh, the head, the valves, here's the uh, intake manifold cover. This here was a big disappointment, the water pump. That's actually a, a plastic part there, unlike the other one which is cast iron. This is a plastic impeller, I think that's what it's called. Big disappointment. but. It's not a huge deal. I want to swap, swap it around another day. The distributor is uh, mounted in a different hole. Although I'm pretty sure we can, I can interchange them. Uh, the other engine has this hole on the casting. It's blocked with the uh, plug just like this one. So as you can see, here's the cover. It's got these slots here for the... Uh, front mounts but see if I can use that setup with the uh, slots sorry with the uh, engine mounts on the middle of the engine then I can actually just get rid of the uh, I don't need that little cross member piece and uh, I can get rid of that and I think it'll make everything easier 
you can actually remove the transmission without worrying about supporting the engine whereas this way you got to support the engine and so this is my big dilemma now is uh, I gotta get a new dist distributor if I'm to use that engine or try to swap that one which I'm not 100% certain is doable that engine doesn't have this part I can just use this one um, so I have parts to make one engine but I will eventually finish both engines uh, it's just a question of which one I should put in my car so that engine, the one, the OHV, there's a cover there. The cylinder walls are a little in, in better shape than this one, so. And I kind of like the other one better. It's more space. It's taller and more space around it, which I kind of, I really like that. I prefer it that way. Uh, the flat head is a little bit simpler. There's no valves and springs and, um, valve guides, none of that. But the cylinder head is cracked, it's got a small crack in it, well a decent crack, enough to leak a lot of coolant. So I have to get that welded. But I I, I feel like this other engine is, is better. So that's it there. I'll, I'll just leave the camera on for the last few minutes just to show me uh, removing the uh, pistons. Piston removal. If you want to watch it. can't get all of them at the same time you gotta turn the crankshaft so use a small piece of wood and knock it off gently it should come off if, it's, if you start needing too much force Just backing off and that's it. it just slides right off. So I'm definitely gonna get rid of all that garbage there. Oh here's what destroyed this engine. <laughs> Look at that piston there. That's what the problem was. So we've got one piston down. guy that told me the engine has lots of pistons so placing pistons shouldn't be a problem shouldn't be expensive either connecting rod seems all right it's not bent not marked so let's take a look at the other pistons this one the one that I said was seized on the uh, wrist pins or piston pins, that's what I prefer to call them. Just using the wood here to just pry on it enough so that I can remove it. Oh, 
that piston, the rings are cracked, but the piston seems all right. Piston is still good, fortunately. So, I've got a whole new ring set. That's from that piston I just took out. And I was hoping for just a direct replacement. That would have been nice. Like most things in my life, things don't come easy. También está jodido. Chingado. This one is also screwed up. Fucked up. What the hell did these people do to this engine? I think they must have ran it without oil. Actually melted holes on it like that. Rings have actually melted, fused, or I don't know. That one's done. So, so far, I need two pistons. Let's see the last one. Bueno esto. Bueno, está jodido, está chingado. That's the last one. Missing a piston ring as well. And big holes on the So we need at least three pistons. This, the rings just completely disappeared from this one. It broke through. How the game goes, looks like we'll need a whole new piston set. At least the cylinder walls are fine, so there's no scratches on them. scratching whatsoever so I don't know how that happens crank shaft should turn five at this point and yeah it's fine
This engine actually has two squirt holes on each side. As you can see, so do the uh, rod bearings. My other engine, the original flathead, has it on one side. And, uh, apparently, later on, they were done away with altogether. Pretty much it. That's all I can do for now. Es todo lo que podemos hacer por ahora, mi señor.